There is no shortage of uncertainty going on in organizations right now, whether it's layoffs or just a general lack of not being sure where things are going with an organization. And it's often extremely frustrating because it feels like things are completely out of control, which leads to lots of really kind of two spectrums, either do nothing, we just kind of panic and do nothing, or we run around doing a lot of things, trying to justify our own existence. And then we end up doing a lot of useless things, which wears us out, but doesn't add any value. At the same time, when we're leading teams, we have a really high risk of turnover that we have to navigate. Because the problem is, this is just a self-fulfilling prophecy where if things get bad, we don't control it well, people leave, things get worse because we don't have the resources to do the things that are good. It just it just spirals out of control. So the point of today was wanting to spend some time just talking about how can we actually lead this well? Because the reality is there are ways that can help you lead well through uncertainty. So I wanna share just after having been a people leader for almost 20 years, what it is that you can do to do that well. Now, I won't claim to have all the answers, but I've gotten beat up, I've taken some bruises, I've broken some bones along the way and have learned some things. So the first thing that I want to tie on here is not to avoid it. This is one of the worst things I see leaders do is they are uncomfortable with the uncertainty. They themselves are struggling with the uncertainty. And when that happens, one of the number one tendencies I see is to just pretend as though it's not happening and then maybe hopefully it'll just go away, which it's not going to. And I get it's really uncomfortable and it can be really awkward to have to deal with things not being in a good place. And a lot of times you've got to deal with the whole feelings around, oh, now we're talking about our feelings and what are we doing about this? And I don't have the answers and people want answers and I can't give them to it. Well, okay. The problem with not talking about it is it doesn't go anywhere. The uncertainty, the feelings and emotions people are wrestling with, the doubts that they're having, all of this, they're still happening. The problem is when you don't talk about it and you don't bring it up and acknowledge what's happening and let people work through this stuff, they're still working through it, but they're working through it in ways that you're just now out of the loop on, which means you're not there to help lead it well because they're not going to look to you. And this is a really critical point because this is, as a leader, your job not to fix all the problems, not to make it all right for everyone, but to help people navigate it well. And if you just turn a blind eye, you're not even there doing what you ultimately are responsible and accountable for doing. The other thing with this is when you don't address it, what I have seen time and time and time again is again, they're still feeling it. They're still dealing with it. They're still talking about it, just not with you. And the reality is you are in a better position with likely more information than they have. And the thing is, when people don't have information, this isn't just about work and uncertainty, but when people don't have information, they fill in the gaps. It's just an inevitability. When you don't have information, it's the way our brains work. We fill in things. What people fill things in with 99 times out of 100 is not good stuff. People are not giving things the benefit of the doubt, thinking positively about, I'm sure it's fine. Now, granted, are, are there people who are acting that way? Maybe. But especially in times of struggle and challenge, that isn't people's default mode. And so when you're not doing your job and you're not leading and you're not leading into this and acknowledging what's happening and being tone deaf as though hey, everything's great. Let's focus on the positive. Let's ignore the fact that, wow, things suck right now. And I get it. People are filling in all those gaps with much worse information than probably is even true. Because the reality is in times of uncertainty, it's never as black and white and as simple as we often can frame it up to be. Oh, well, if we just change this, or if this leader just did this, it'd fix the problem. The reality is there's so much nuance and complexity into this that people just don't have the information and giving them more information while still acknowledging what's happening allows them to better fill in those gaps and not have as big of a gap that they have to jump that then gets filled in with garbage that ultimately you really, really do not want people filling it in with. So if anything, 
I get it's uncomfortable. I get it's murky. I get sometimes it'd be like, I myself am struggling with this. I don't want to have to deal with this with everybody else. If anything, make sure you are talking about it. Now, when it comes to how you're talking about it and the way you approach it, one of the biggest things that can be really helpful is to, in this time, okay, authenticity and trust are huge. Well, actually, trust is really at the foundation of all of this. So even going back to like leaning in and actually talking and addressing this, it's a trust building exercise. When you act tone deaf, there's no trust because unless you're just a bumbling idiot, your team knows you're you're aware of what's going on and you're seeing it. And so when you pretend it's not there, that authenticity of acknowledging it, they're looking to you for that. They're looking to you to see how are you handling this? Are you being real with what's going on? Are you being authentic? Are you acknowledging the reality of what's happening right now? And while you may not like it, people are holding you to a higher standard. You're going to make mistakes along those ways, okay? It's going to happen. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to bat 33%. You're going to make a lot of misses, but you need to own them. And that's the biggest part. You are struggling with it just like they are. Be authentic in that. That actually, while uncomfortable, helps build trust with your team because they see, hey, I'm wrestling with this just like you are. Here's how I'm getting through this. Here's some of the information that is helping me process this well, that's helping me navigate through these kinds of things. While at the same time recognizing this is how I'm processing. I don't have an expectation that you're going to process exactly like I am, and I'm not going to hold you accountable to that expectation. But I'm going to be authentic and real. I'm going to share what I can. I'm going to talk about how these things are actually working. The other big thing with this, though, in that authenticity, and this goes back to being authentic, follow through with things. At a time of uncertainty, do not make promises you can't keep. And this is something that well-meaning leaders often do. They see their team struggling. They see people having a hard time and they think, I'll just, I'll just tell them this and hopefully that will make them feel better. But you have to ask yourself, can I actually follow through on what I'm just saying? Or is this completely outside of my control? There was an instance I heard about recently with uh, somebody that I was coaching where they thought they knew and they said something and things changed and it didn't end up going that way. And they were in this awkward position where they had made a mistake. So going back to you're going to make mistakes, they couldn't follow through even though when they made the commitment, they did think they'd be able to follow through. So I say that because there are going to be things you're going to commit to that ultimately the tides change and you can't. And you know what this leader did, which I think was one of the best things they could have done in that situation is they owned it. They said, based on the information I had at the time when I shared it, it was a commitment I thought I could follow through with. And the reality is things changed and I get how that makes me look. Right? They completely owned it. They were authentic with the fact that they were well-intentioned. They were going off of good information and things changed. But what you don't want to do is make promises on hopes and dreams in an attempt to hopefully snuff out any concerns when you know full well you are in no way, shape, or form in a position to make that commitment. So whatever you do, people are holding you to a higher standard. Make sure you follow through with things. Don't commit to things that you don't feel highly confident you'll be able to follow through on. And no matter what happens, be authentic. Something else that's really important in these times is getting to know your people. Um, this is something that again, can be uncomfortable even as leaders, is actually spending the time to get you to know your people on an individual level. You need to intentionally create space for open and honest conversations. Again, going back to this, in times of uncertainty, it's about trust because there's a lack of trust and people need to know, can I trust my leader? Can I actually trust you? And if you don't know them, it's that much harder for them to trust you. If they don't know you and you don't know them, how, how do you have trust in that relationship? Well, you don't. And when you build that trust, you actually open the door to create space for honest conversation. Going back to being authentic and not avoiding it. 
people need to talk about this. I grew up in a funeral home and the reality is a lot of these things, they're grief cycles. People are going through it. They're in denial. They're angry. They go through depression. Then they move on to acceptance. This is a process people are going through and people need to have those open conversations, both as a team and on an individual level. So as you get to know your teams, make sure you're balancing that. Don't just be like, well, I'm talking about it in group settings or, well, I'm talking about it on an individual level. So I don't need to talk about it with the group. No, again, going back to, you do not want to be driving these things into the shadows. You want to be bringing them into the light and you want to do that through individual conversations and group conversations, which by the way, should not just be work related. Going back to not being tone deaf. Sometimes when we're going through this, we just focus on what's next. What are the priorities? How's your work coming along? Instead of saying, how are you doing both on a personal level and on a professional level. How are you holding up in this situation? And that can be a really uncomfortable conversation if you're not familiar with having that. But you would be surprised how many people go, and I've had these conversations myself, how many people go, thank you for doing that. Thank you for creating the space for me to open up and share. And you can do that by being authentic and sharing where you're at and then just going there, going in, leaning in and getting to know this. This is also gonna help you identify What's going on with your people? What things are they really good at? How are they navigating this? They may have skills they may be able to share with the team. There may be activities that are really draining on them in these times of uncertainty that you may be able to say, well, maybe we change that. Maybe we need to change this given this because we know how vulnerable people are right now. We need to make a shift to shift things up. Uh, and be okay as you get to know people to let them talk openly about what they don't like. I get there's a big difference between being, you know, there's, there's a difference between being negative and complaining about everything and productively talking about what's not going well or what you're not talking about. Now you can, again, going back to being authentic, you can model this for your teams so that they can see how do I share what's not going well or what I'm frustrated with without turning into the negative Nancy um, or negative Nathan, right? That's, that's complaining all the time about everything and sees a demon under every rock while at the same time acknowledging like, you know what, things are difficult. And I think this is something that as leaders you're responsible for. You need to get to know your people in a holistic sense. What's personal, what's professional, what's going well. What are you really enjoying spending time doing? What are you not liking? Now's this time things are uncertain. Maybe now's the time we really look at, are there things that are going on in your work and your activity that you go, you know, it really helped me get through this if I didn't have to deal with some of this stuff. And then again, being authentic of don't ask those questions and then do nothing with it. Follow through. If you're going to have that conversation, if you're going to open the door and say, hey, let's do something about that, make sure you do something about that. And if there's something that you absolutely can't do because it's completely outside of your control, then don't make a promise that you can't keep. And if you do, acknowledge that you did and own it. Own it as a mistake and don't be afraid of that. All right, something else. At times of uncertainty, going back to this, there's a lack of trust, but also there's this just sense of things are out of control. And oftentimes, even in the most uncertain times, people, there are things within your control, but a lot of times where people end up spending a lot of their time, and again, this is about getting to know your people and talking well about what people don't like. People spend a lot of time and effort on things that are completely outside of their control. Oh, if we change this, if this just happened, if we stop doing this, it's like, do you actually have the ability to change that? Now, does that mean you should just shut people down when they're sharing these things? No, no. But as a leader, redirect and bring that back. And there's a way and an art and science to doing this where maybe somebody shares something that they're frustrated with in general, and they need the space to be able to do that. But at the same time saying, so is there anything we can do about that? Is there anything we could be doing to be driving towards that? And sometimes the self-realization kicks in and people realize, you know what, there's not. And I just needed to get that off my chest. And you go, okay, great, great. I hear you. I completely agree. And we're going to continue kind of seeing how things play out and working through that. While at the same time saying, but is there something that we can do? Because the reality is there are always things that you can control. When I hear people say, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, there's always something you can do about it. Even if it means they need to leave, which I'm going to talk about in a second. 
There are always things that are inside your control. And the better you get at identifying, hey, we may not be able to control this and this, but there's a whole lot of space in here that we actually have a lot of things that we can control. You know, I've, I've been in organizations where we were going through layoffs or the company was downsizing or there were new leaders in place that had specific things. And then being able to say, right, that may be true and we may be limited into this, but given that situation, what are some things that are directly tied to this? I think sometimes what happens is when we're going through this uncertainty, it's easy to think about these big things that really at the end of the day don't have a direct effect on us. And as a leader, it's your job to bring people back to the things that are within their control and say, all right, I get it. This stuff's going on. Like we need to talk about it and that's okay. It's a safe space to have open dialogue, to discuss what some of these things are at the same time. Let's bring this back. Let's talk about in this environment, what can we do about it? Because there are things we can do. And get granular. Don't leave it at this verbose executive level thing that's like, yeah, okay, like maybe we'll get better at efficiency. Like how? What are we going to do? We need more flexibility. Okay, great. What does that look like? I just wish we had more autonomy or more control over our own work. Great. What could we do to do that? Get specific and lean into some of these things so that not only people feel like they can, but that it's okay. Something else that I think is really important that's time within these areas where things are uncertain. It's one of the best times to experiment with new things, right? Aligning them to what they control and say, hey, within that gray area, between these two things that are outside of our control, we got a lot of space, but now's maybe not the time to go big or try something over the top, but maybe now's the time to try something small and see what kind of traction we can get. You're, you want to spend more time on this. Well, let's experiment with that and see if we can't make some of that come to life. And then if it grows, well, great, then we'll expand on that. Maybe it'll fluster out and you'll realize maybe that isn't really what we need to do. Experimentation is such a powerful way to lead a team through these really uncertain times, to give them something to focus on other than the things that are outside of their control. Give them something that is within their control that they can experiment with, they can learn and grow even in these really tough times. But again, be careful with those promises because that can be something where in good intentions, you promise things that just ultimately you can't carry forward. So be careful with that. The last thing, and this is one that may be controversial, but I have found over the years, it is so helpful for teams. Don't fear attrition. Now you may say, didn't you say in the beginning that we should be trying to do everything to keep our teams? Yeah, we should. We should. At the same time, we can't fear that people might go, well, what if people leave? Well, you know what? Then we help them go through that decision-making process and we help them make that decision well and recognize that, you know what? There are times that that is the right decision for that individual. So be supportive of that. Don't try and force someone to stay. Don't try and lie to them to trick them into staying. Don't try and you know make promises that you can't keep in hopes that maybe they'll stick around. The reality is you're not going to be able to completely prevent attrition. You're not. It's not going to go away. That risk isn't there. And when we try and force it or make it seem as though that is an unacceptable conclusion to come to as an employee in times of uncertainty, just like ignoring the whole situation, you drive this stuff into the shadows. When you as a leader aren't leaning in and going, listen, I understand there's a lot of uncertainty. I understand there's a lot of really frustrating things happen right now. I understand that that may having you question whether this is the right place for you. But as a leader, I know that it's, it's okay for you to be thinking that. And you know what? It's also okay. Maybe you need to explore some things. What I want to do is invite you into that to not try and convince you not to do it, but to help you make that decision wisely because you don't want to be caught off guard. And if you drive it into the shadows, they're still going through this decision-making process on their own, except again, going back to what I said earlier, the gaps that they have, now they're filling it in with, oh, the grass is greener. Oh, here's all the horrible things I'm dealing with. Oh, I'm sure it's just going to be bad here and there. Versus if you're helping and leaning in and helping them objectively make that decision, what what really are you looking for in a new opportunity? Is that something you can get here? And again, if you're doing this well, you're building trust with this individual to further make them think, 
okay, maybe things are really uncertain here. Maybe there are a lot of really frustrating things happen, but I have a manager who's invested in me, who isn't afraid to let me spread my wings, who isn't afraid that maybe this isn't the best place for me and is leaning into that. And this is one of the things that happens. I see a lot of people make mistakes when attrition comes up. They throw money at people. They throw threats at people. They make promises they know they can't keep. And it only causes more damage. It drives people into the shadows. It actually leads to greater attrition versus actually just acknowledging things as they are, inviting them in to be a trusted person, inviting them to go through that journey together. And actually, and this is on you, people leaders, you actually have to have the mindset that it actually is okay if they come to the conclusion. Because if you don't have that mindset, they can smell it. And again, going back to being authentic, people are watching you. And they are seeing your actions. They're seeing the way you're handling tough decisions. They're seeing the way you're treating people in this. And so if you in one breath say, hey, everyone, I know you may be thinking about other things. So just invite me into that so I can help you do that. And you're clubbing people or you're guilting them or shaming them or you know, doing like people are going to see it and you're just going to further erode trust, which is the absolute worst thing that you can do in times of uncertainty as a leader. So hopefully this has given you some food for thought, some things that you can consider because the reality is uncertainty is certain, but how you lead through it is not.